this video we'll be talking about the 2D view. The 2D view is the simpler one of the two preview windows next to the 3D view. I'll be explaining you how to get something to show up in the 2D view, what the different buttons do, and how you can use it to build your graphs. The first thing to understand is how to get something to show up in your 2D view. It's quite simple. You simply double click on a node to get something to show up. So if I'd like to see this node, I'll double click it and the 2D preview changes. You can actually use this double click method together with the single click method. If I double click here, very far down the line, the final result of my material blend, and I click further back on an earlier node that affects the final result, I can change these properties because I did a single click to only see the properties view change while I'm seeing the preview of the later node in the 2D view here. So this means I can tweak a final result while selecting nodes that sit much further back and do much more granular things. So with that out of the way, I'll show you what these different buttons do. The first one at the bottom here is to toggle your channels on and off. So I can view, for example, individually the green channel. Now it does present this to me in a tint that's uh, similar to the channel. To view this in uh, grayscale, I can simply click this button here to toggle it to grayscale, click it to turn it back on. If I'd like to see all my channels again, it's easier to click on this little icon instead of the drop down. Next to that, I've got a button to toggle my alpha display on and off. There's none here, but if I would have an alpha channel here, I could toggle it on and off. Next to that is an interesting one. This is the uh, tiling display. If I click that, it will repeat my image next to the central image for me to preview the tiling. There's actually a hotkey for this. If I press spacebar, it toggles the tiling on and off. And if I hover over the central image, it shows me a red line that displays the actual bounds or seams of the image. Next to that, we've got the physical size display. Now this doesn't do anything by default. It's because you need to go into the graph properties. So remember from the graph view, we double click here. And then under the attributes, there's a physical size slider. Only the X and Y slider affect this parameter and they both have to be higher than zero. So you see if I increase these, it changes the proportions so that they can relate to a physical size of a mesh or a uh, wall that you're applying this to. After that, we've got one of the most useful ones, I think. This is the image information button. And let me just scale this down a bit. And this is a sort of uh, almost like a color picker. You hover over a pixel and it shows you the exact information relating to that pixel, such as X and Y position in absolute pixels and relative uh, float values, hue saturation value, as well as exact RGBA values in uh, 8 bit and in full floating decimals. So this is quite good if you are trying to debug a, uh, a mesh where it's hard to see the exact values. It's especially good if you're working with high color precision where a uh, you just simply can't see in black and white if you're dealing with um, a specific value. Next to that, we've got a histogram where you can see a histogram separately for luminance, red, green, blue, RGB, and the alpha. Then there is an sRGB toggle to toggle displaying something sRGB or not. There's a button for pre-multiplying your alpha or not. And then next to that, we've got some interesting ones. The first one is the fit. If I click that, it will just as with the graph or with the 3D view, it will fit my view into the image. And the hotkey for that is F. So F to fit that into view. And then finally, we've also have a zoom button, which zooms in on the 2D preview so that one pixel on this image matches one pixel on my display. The hotkey for that is Z. So F and Z to zoom between these. Of course, you can always use scroll wheel to zoom in and out as well. Next to these two buttons, we have a type in for the scale value. And uh, this changes on the fly when you're zooming in and out. But what's more interesting is that there is a uh, lock button next to that. What this lock button does, it won't do anything uh, on, at the first view when you're not using different resolutions. But right here, I have two nodes with a different resolution, one at 1024, one at 256. So uh, pay close attention to what the zoom is doing and what this value is doing. If I switch to the one at 256, it the value stays the same, but it zooms out a lot. And if I double click this one, it zooms in again. Now, if you don't like this behavior, in some cases it might be annoying, you can turn off the keep view size button. And if you then switch between the two, it keeps the size in view, but changes the zoom value dynamically to keep that size. And then finally, we've got a few buttons at the top here. There's one to set up a background image. So you can open up a background image here. I've got this leaf alpha, for example. We have a slider to adjust the opacity. 
X to turn it off. You can save your image out directly. And this is a bit faster than exporting your bitmaps from the uh, Explorer window. There's a copy to clipboard, very useful if you want to quickly paste this image or use it in Photoshop for a composition. And then the button next to that is if you double click on an output, it activates and you can quickly switch between all your defined outputs. And then finally, there is a toggle for setting your UV to display in uh, the 2D view or not. For this, you need to go into 3D view and mark display UVs in 2D view. And you can toggle it on and off. And with the drop down, you can select the different UV sets that might be available. That's it for the 2D view. It's fairly simple to use, especially keep in mind that double click and single click uh, methodology. See you in the next video.